In this video, we will cover the dural reflections and dural venous sinuses. The cranial dura mater is a thick, tough bilaminar membrane that is adherent to the internal aspect of the calvaria. The two layers are an outer periosteal layer, shown to be grey here on the diagram, and an inner meningeal layer, which is shown to be cream on this diagram here. Usually, these layers are fused together except for where the meningeal layer reflects from the periosteal layer to form partitions between different areas of the brain. For example, we have the full cerebri here that forms a partition between the left and the right cerebral hemispheres. We can see the tentorum cerebelli, which forms a partition between the upper cerebrum and lower cerebellum. We have the full cerebelli, which forms a partial partition between the left and right cerebellar hemispheres. And then finally, although we can't see it on the model, the diaphragm cellae, which forms a dural roof over the pituitary glands. The dural venous sinuses are endothelium line spaces between the periosteal and meningeal layers of dura. Large veins from the surface of the brain empty into these sinuses, and most of the blood from the brain will drain through them into the internal jugular vein. The superior sagittal sinus runs within the upper border of the fulc cerebri. It runs from the crista galli, located anteriorly, although we can't see it on the model, all the way to the internal occipital protuberance, which we can see here. Arachnoid granulations, which are where arachnoid projects through the meningeal layer of dura mater, are primarily found in the superior sagittal sinus, although some can be found in other sinuses as well. These are regions for where CSF is transported back into the venous system. The inferior sagittal sinus is located within the free edge of the fork cerebri, and we can see that here. It runs from this anterior portion here, posteriorly, to where it's met by this vein here, which is the great cerebral vein, and where these unite, they form the straight sinus, which runs at the attachment between the fork cerebri and the tentorum cerebelli. The occipital sinus is located posteriorly, very close to the cerebellum here. So it runs posteriorly from the cerebellum, or at least behind the cerebellum, to the internal occipital protuberance here. All of the sinuses that we've discussed so far run close to the internal occipital protuberance at a region known as the confluence of sinuses. Here, blood can run laterally, either right or left, although the majority will flow left, into the transverse sinus here and here. The transverse sinus runs along the occipital bone to the inferior angle of the parietal bone, where it will then become the sigmoid sinus. The sigmoid sinus is located here, and it is an S-shaped sinus, and runs along the temporal bone until where the internal jugular vein forms, approximately here, and blood will then exit the skull. The last sinus that we're going to discuss is the cavernous sinus. The cavernous sinus is located lateral to the cella tersica, which is approximately here. So we have a cavernous sinus here, and we'll have a cavernous sinus on the left-hand side. And the cavernous sinus is just a plexus of veins that will drain posteriorly, or at least can drain posteriorly, into the sigmoid sinus via the superior petrosal vein, which we can see here the superior petrosal sinus, which runs along the tentorum cerebelli, or directly into the internal jugular vein via the inferior petrosal sinus. And the inferior petrosal sinus is the first tributary of the internal jugular vein. There is a few clinical considerations that we must discuss. Some cranial nerves will pass through the cavernous sinus. So in cases of infection, whether it be coming from the eyes, the nose, the mouth, or the ears, a thrombus can form in the cavernous sinus. And the consequence of this is if this clot forms, it has the potential to compress the cranial nerves that pass through the cavernous sinus, leading to cranial nerve palsy. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.